everyone. Uh, it's been a little while since I've done a series of videos, but I wanted to create a quick one today to give you some of my quick tips and tricks of Microsoft Project. I'm a little bit rusty, it's been a while, um, but I want to come in here and show you some of the things I love to do in Microsoft Project. So whenever I'm using Microsoft Project, one of the first things I'll do is adjust the layout to be exactly how I want it to be. You can see I've already done this, but I'm going to show you what I've done. So I like this entry bar here at the top of the screen. It gives you that Excel-like capability to come in and actually adjust the text here. Like so. Um, that isn't there out of the box. What you need to do to get it is go File, Options, Display, and you see this entry bar here. If I actually remove that, you'll see it's gone. And then I have to kind of click in here, and it's a little bit more fiddly, just like it is in Excel. If you want that Excel like entry bar, file, options, display, entry bar. And there you go. That's a big one. I use that all the time. It's much easier to just come in here, click around, make the changes that you want. Another thing, I like to access the quick access toolbar all the time. And I do this to have my save button, undo, redo. That's there out of the box. But I actually add in here a few other things. One of the things I like to add is the scroll to task button. How do I do that? Well, it's the same in any any Office application today. Come in here, click on the little drop down arrow, more commands. You see on the left hand side a whole bunch of actions that you can add. I like to add the scroll to task. So if it's not there already, you can come in here, type S on the keyboard, scroll down, scroll to task, add that one in too. You might want to add things such as publish, that's another one, and you can reorder them as well. So you have save, publish, undo, redo, scroll to task. Another one that I usually add if you're a Project Online user is the clear up cache. If I come in here, all commands, clean up cache. Let's take a look. There it is. A little bit tricky to find, but there it is. And you can add that one as well. And reorder them as you like based on your preferences. Save, publish, undo, redo, clean up cache, scroll to task. You'll find if you're using Microsoft Project Online from time to time, you need to clear up your cache, remove those old, old projects that you're no longer working on. That clean up cache button can help you to do that quickly and easily. The scroll to task is my favorite. I use that all the time. What does it do? Oh, if I expand this out, I can actually click on any task and click scroll to task and it will show me that task in the Gantt chart. Or if I want to do a selection of tasks, expand this section out here, select these three, scroll to those tasks. Pretty nice. It works really, really well. To find that, usually you have to go into the task ribbon all the way on the far right hand side. It's kind of a lot of clicking and scrolling for me. So I always added that. What else do I do? Well, you can see in this schedule I have here, it's I haven't really done much, but you can see for all of your summary tasks, you get this bold text, which is kind of nice, helps them to stand out. I like to take that one step further. So rather than just having bold, I like to highlight my summary tasks and also my milestones as well. How do I do that? Well, to do this, all you need to do is come to the View ribbon. In fact, it's Format text styles in here in text styles we can select items to change so I can apply formatting options to certain things so I'm going to come in here items to change summary tasks you can see by default they're bold I also like to change the background color I don't know why but I've always gone for this light green color it's kind of ugly but it helps me to see press OK now all of my summary tasks are green for this view Right, we're in the Gantt chart view right now. If I had a different view, it wouldn't apply to that view. But you can apply it to different views as you like. So let's do that for one more thing. So textiles, I like to do green. And then for my summary tasks, my milestone tasks, I like to do a foreground color, actually, of dark blue. Press OK. And now you can see they stand out quite nicely so I can easily look at my schedule I can see summary tasks 
green, the actual tasks themselves, and the milestones in my schedule. I feel this is really, really cool stuff. Really helps me to navigate, especially when you have a long schedule. Now you probably notice I have this uh, outline numbering or work breakdown structure. So you see 1, 1.1, 1 1.2. 1 you can see here we have the top level in line zero is the name of the project. How did I get that? You may be wondering. Well, I did not add them in. Some people come in and finger this, but you know, every time you adjust something, you've got to redo it. So in Microsoft Project, all we need to do is click on the format ribbon, the top right hand corner, you see outline number, click on that one. And it looks at the work breakdown structure based on your summary tasks and the indentations of the tasks within them and it will number them for you. Pretty nice, that's the outline number. There's actually a column for that as well, it's called outline number, surprise, surprise. So you can actually add a column in for that, some people like that, not really me, outline, uh, outline number is it? Yep, there it is, and you can see the same thing here. So if you wanted to have it separately, some people like that, I can see why, or you can have it in there as well, or both, up to you. Some nice options there to really help you to read and understand so that your schedule is just not this big long horrible thing that you're trying to work with another one project summary task you see in line zero i had the name of my project displayed which is much more than the name it tells me the duration of my project start date and finish date of my project that project summary task summer is like a master summary i like to think of it and it summarizes everything that's going on within the project pretty nice Outline number, project summary task, another couple of cool, quick tips and tricks there. So another thing that I like to do is when I'm in Microsoft Project, I always like to select different views. So whenever I'm in a view, I go to the view ribbon and you can see the ones that I've used, or the, the ones that are always available. There are other views here. So Gantt chart, if we click on the drop down, more views. There are so many awesome views out there to use, and you can, if you don't like any of them, you can create your own. Take a look and get familiar with these because it can make your life so much easier. For example, if you're tracking project progress, I can come to the tracking Gantt view. Click apply. Completely different view. Shows me all different information. In fact, another quick trick. I'm trying to find my schedule here. Can't find it. Right? <laughs> uh, what I could do is use my scroll to task button. That'll work. But also, you can click this entire project zoom button. That's going to adjust the time scale of your project so that you can see all of the tasks in the window that you have. What do I mean by that? Well, if I give it a smaller window on my splitter bar, you see how it fills the, the, you can now see all of the tasks in the Gantt chart. It's adjusting the time scale according to the amount of space that you've given it using the splitter bar. Split of R as a whole, cool thing in and of itself. One other thing, when it comes to views, you probably noticed that I've removed the timeline view. So this does come as default. It is a really cool tool, but it takes up real estate, and real estate is valuable to me. So I always remove it until I need it, and then I can bring it back. You might be thinking, well, why did you add this entry bar then? If you're worried about real estate, well, I just love it, <laughs> and it's all personal preference. You know, pull that up out of sight. That's another way to remove the timeline bar. All right, that is it for this quick tips and tricks session on general navigation around the Microsoft Project Interface. I'm going to do a few more videos. Stand by for more. Um, please, if you have any ideas, feel free to leave some comments. Subscribe to my channel. Love to hear how I can help you. Just trying to share the wealth here. Thank you so much.